I wanted to ask you about this revelation around the use of drones to monitor migration detainees. I the opposition has some scepticism about this. It's my understanding it is occurring. Does that surprise you? Well, there's a couple of issues here. One, either Andrew Giles accidentally and casually disclosed a previously secret drone surveillance program operating domestically in Australia on a Sky News interview with your colleague Kieran Gilbert, or he made it up and it's not actually happening at all. And in a fresh statement provided by the Department of Home Affairs to SBS, uh, I understand yesterday afternoon, they refer to using uh, aerial surveillance to look at people's uh, locations and other buildings in the area. Now, you don't need a drone to do that. That's sounds like satellite imagery. It sounds like, frankly, something a 12-year-old could get on Google Earth. So no questions have been answered here. The AFP denies that they're using it and they say they're not aware of it, despite being at the heart of Operation Aegis. Several state police forces have denied using it. So really, what on earth is going on here and why wouldn't Andrew Giles be upfront about whether or not he just made this up or he accidentally revealed a secret drone program? All right, on, just changing tack here. On Friday night, the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, posted that Ticker Tech had advised that data belonging to their customers has been stolen. There wouldn't be many of us who haven't used Ticker Tech. This is becoming more and more common, this, isn't it? Uh, it certainly is, and this does appear to be, at least in scale, a very serious attack. The uh, level of information being provided uh, at this stage looks like it is minimal, thankfully, uh, but it's a very large number of people who are likely to be affected by this. It's very important that companies are upfront about this and that the government gets its act together in responding to this to protect Australians. They need to make sure that Australians have all the avenues available to them if they need to, to replace any identity documents, that they are able to uh, protect their identity and they understand the spear phishing and other attacks that are now likely to be targeted towards them. All right, I wanted to ask you about what Richard Miles said about the relationship with China. He says the government's not weak. Uh, Premier Lee is visiting. He says he's called out the Defence Minister for the Chinese military's actions. Do you still think he's weak? He says you guys couldn't even pick up the phone to China. Well, Richard Miles has finally done, a weeks later, the absolute bare minimum, which is raise an issue of a very serious, unprofessional, unsafe conduct by the People's Liberation Army against Australian uh, personnel, which put their uh, lives in danger. That's the bare minimum that the Australian government should do. I thought it was very interesting in his interview with you, Andrew, that he said that the previous government didn't offer respect to the Chinese government. Now, that is straight out of the... Uh, Chinese Communist Party talking points. That's exactly the arguments that they run, but it should never be endorsed by an Australian government. And if Richard Miles believes that the previous government didn't show sufficient respect to the Chinese government, he should specify exactly what he means by that. Was it calling out Chinese foreign interference in our democracy? Was it calling out Chinese malign conduct in the South China Sea? Was it calling out horrific human rights abuses in China? He should say which one of those things didn't show sufficient respect to the Chinese government and why we should show respect by silencing and censoring our ourselves, because that is an act of weakness. Do you think Premier Lee should come here then or we should disinvite him? No, I think dialogue actually is important, but we have to use the opportunity provided by dialogue to stand up for Australia. But he not says like he the is. the Prime Minister failed to do. But uh, James well, Patterson, he says time? he is. Well, well, he finally has done so with his counterpart, but why didn't the Prime Minister do so with his counterpart in San Francisco last year when we learn about the incident involving HMAS Toowoomba? Well, and he's the never... Sonar, he's never uh, of Australian Navy PM's divers. never admitted he, he, he didn't raise that. He's never said he didn't raise no, that. No, he's invented... He's invented a convention of international relations, which he himself doesn't adhere to, which is he said he can never talk about uh, discussions with foreign leaders, except Benjamin Netanyahu, who he's very happy to talk about the context of uh, his private conversations with him. He can't have it both ways. The Prime Minister invents these conventions for political convenience. Either you never talk about your, your discussions with foreign leaders, or you do, not when it suits you. Just finally, James Patterson, can I get a reaction from you to the Trump verdict and what it means for the United States? Well, look, there's very little I can add, uh, Andrew, to the extensive commentary already out there. These are domestic legal matters for the United States. Uh, it is obviously a very hard-fought issue uh, and will continue to be uh, until the election. But my very strong view is that Australia's equities in the United States-Australia alliance are so deep that whoever is in the White House after uh, the election in November uh, will continue to have a very strong relationship with the United States, which is in our national interest. James Patterson, thanks so much for your time this morning. Thanks, Andrew.